There we go. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, it's really great to see uh, some of you as we go into this camping season, um, approaching common ground as well. Um, Tonight's uh, webinar is on safeguarding and consent, and we are lucky to have um, Nadia Asri with us. She is on our general council and she is the lead trustee for safeguarding, um, as well as Lucy Kirby, who is our DF messed up representative. Um, so I will leave you in their very capable hands um, and I will, I will be doing the slides this evening. So uh, Lucy and Nadia do let me know just when you want me to, to change the slide. Um, but over to you. Oh, and uh, can everyone see this? Am I sharing the right screen? Can everyone see? Okay. Yes, um, thank you. Fantastic, good. Perfect, thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, and thank you for coming. Um, yeah, so I think you can you can you can go to the next slide. So just to, to kind of cover what we're going to cover today, uh, we'll go over kind of basic concepts and minimum expectations, good practice and sources of support. Um, we, I think we're going to keep it kind of to a minimum in terms of uh, discussion. And we'd really like for you to kind of get involved at the end. Um, so please do think about the questions that you have. Uh, but if it's a burning question, please do feel free to kind of put your hand up. Uh, your virtual hand is better uh, because we ca I can't see all of your um, your actual hands, uh, and we will we will try and our best to to address them. Uh, so I think you can also go to the next slide, and I'll hand over to Lucy. Perfect, thank you. So the first bit is just on what is safeguarding. So I, we've got um, which is probably one of the biggest things that's important on common ground and just in Woodcraft in general, because you're working with young children. So it's protecting children from maltreatment and preventing the impairment of children's health and development, um, which probably is a, bit, a much broader definition than lots of people would see safeguarding, which is just prevention from immediate harm. Um, and then ensuring that children are growing up in, in circumstances consistent with the provision of safe and effective care. And then also taking action to enable children to have the best outcomes, which I think is quite vague. So it, I think there's would need to be more work into what counts as the best outcomes. Um, but um, according to Woodcroft, so um, charities which work within which work with children must always act in their best interest and ensure they all take reasonable steps to prevent harm to them. Um, so the reasonable steps would probably be like, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so it's not just the prevention of immediate harm, but having um, systems in place to make sure that long term harm doesn't happen as well. Exactly. Um, and yeah, so I think that as, as a charity that works uh, with children, we must always kind of be acting in their best interests. Um, uh, and so, so yeah, this kind of leads quite nicely onto our next slide, which is what is child protection? Um, it's a part of safeguarding. Um, and promoting welfare. Right, I, I do apologize, oh, Nadia. I, I've just lost the uh, screen. One minute. Let me show that again. Do apologize for that. I'm working okay. between two monitors. Um, okay, perfect. There we are. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah, so child protection um, is part of safeguarding and it's about promoting welfare. Um, and it kind of refers to, to what we do um, to protect specific children who are suffering or are likely to suffer or, you know, um, um, and, and kind of face significant harm. Uh, some examples might be kind of referrals, support plans and other kinds of interventions. Um, but children, all children and children who engage in our activities all have the right to be protected against all forms of abuse and discrimination um, and the right to, to special protection. Um, and help if, if, if relevant. Um, so I can also share a link to Woodcraft's safeguarding policy, which is on the Common Ground uh, website, which might be helpful. Um, and can we have the next slide, please? So yeah, to get kind of more into the specific topics uh, that we wanted to talk about today, we, we kind of wanted to cover um, ahead of Common Ground how we can support children um, and the children and you know the young people who engage in Wilcroft Oaks activities to advocate for themselves um, and to, to, to be empowered to set boundaries for themselves. Um, you know, we, we when, when we were thinking about what to say today, uh, both Lucy and I agreed that it's really important that consent education st starts young. 
um, and, and you know it's not only in reference to kind of intimate relationships and things like this but it's it's with reference to kind of all aspects of their life um, beyond kind of the, the the duty of care you have to keep them safe you know, so if, if the, for example, there was a fire or something and they didn't want to be removed um, from, from that, that would be uh, something that, you know, when, when it's related to their, to their kind of immediate safety um, and, and kind of, and, and health. Um, but kind of beyond that, we think that, we think that it's important that um, consent, cons conversations around consent are kind of relevant. Uh, yeah, so for example, we put an example on the slide saying, you know, that if children should be empowered to say no to a hug, from friends or from a family member um, and it's important that from an early age we start practicing with children um, we start discussing what what boundaries are we just start discussing what might be you know within their boundaries and outside of their boundaries making them sure like you know allowing them to feel sure of, of the fact that something's it's okay to not want to kind of participate or or be you know be involved in in some things um, and to kind of practice asserting those boundaries and, you know, making them feel that it's okay and that they're not going to get in trouble or nothing's, nothing bad is going to happen to them, you know, to them if they, um, if they assert their boundaries. Uh, some of the kind of examples that we were thinking about is that like how to teach kids to ask for consent, um, how to kind of teach kids that, that consent can be given and can be taken and that something that might be okay in, in one instant isn't always okay or something that is okay in one moment, you know, a couple of moments later might not be okay and that's okay. And they can withdraw, you know, they can withdraw their consent and others can withdraw consent. Um, and also kind of thinking about how, how best to follow kind of rules around consent um, uh, when, when other people are kind of assert boundaries. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we've been thinking about um, and, and that we find it you know, important when we, when we talk about you know, child-friendly consent and consent kind of beyond intimate relationships. Uh, so I can hand over to Lucy, I think, for the next slide. Yeah, perfect. So um, to do with um, consent is kind of um, supporting children to be active bystanders when they see consent being broken by other people. So we were having a think about the ways we can, um, the ways we can teach this to children, because it's one thing to say, or oh, if you see someone being treated um, so it's kind of like there's one thing setting your own boundaries and there's another thing and like res respecting someone else's but then it's quite a big thing being able to say I like you're breaking someone else's boundaries you should stop um, and especially as they go into school especially in like secondary school it's a it's a massive massive um, thing to be able to do to be able to um, just not just stand and watch somebody else's um, boundaries being um disrespected so one thing would be yeah so um supporting children to recognize and advocate for their peers because quite often if someone's having their um someone's um being act violent like their consent is um they haven't given their consent for something then they're probably in quite a vulnerable position so if you're if the child who isn't involved in it um is able to see this happening then they can be a big big help with it um so maybe talking to children about how would they feel in that situation and if they're in that situation what would you want how, how would they want someone to behave towards them so how would they want somebody who wasn't involved in it to respond and then they can then take those actions and then um so practicing being an active bystander with children so supporting them to practice so maybe in group sessions kind of make, come up with scenarios and then try and see how they would respond to it because if you can do it in practice then you'll be able then they will be much more likely to be able to do it if it actually occurs um and then we were just gonna we were um following on from that to do just sort of talk about practicing consent and respecting boundaries and stuff um we've had some activities we thought would be really good to do with children to talk about consent because i think lots of the time it's not really spoken about until they're teenagers and actually it's it's important to start from an early age so we were thinking about situations so maybe you could have a think about situations where they could give consent so for example taking something that belongs to you so you could say actually you know what this belongs to me you can't have it unless i've told you you can have it um like like no idea was saying earlier like um touching you and things like that or even just like like sharing food or something being able to say you know, like you can only have some if i've said you can have some um and then having a think about what ways you could say no to somebody so practicing saying no maybe not just in the word no but like um practicing kind of asserting your own boundaries without causing conflict because i think that's a big thing it's quite often you they don't lots of children won't want to say um actually this isn't what I want to do because it, it will like with fear that it will cause conflict especially if they're coming from a more vulnerable vulnerable background and then we were thinking a way to do it um 
so that the children could see it in a more practical way was a drawing exercise. So drawing about like they could like draw a picture of themselves or something and then drawing boundaries around that. So what was inside and outside of their boundaries. Um, so the things that they felt comfortable doing, the things they didn't feel comfortable doing, and then how like how they'd want other people to respect their boundaries. And uh, maybe then what they would do if somebody went inside a boundary that they didn't want them to go inside. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to pass on to Nadia now for the next part. Thank you. Yeah, so I want, we also wanted to share um, some resources with you uh, to, to, you know, so that you can, um, you can, uh, you know, think about different kinds of activities uh, you can do with children um, and also kind of different principles uh, you could kind of keep in mind when when thinking about um, consent and, and, and how to engage with children um, around consent, you know, including follow your own rules for consent and don't kind of um, don't, you know, tell them that it's OK for them to say no um, and, and they should be respected when they say no and then doing whatever you want to do anyway. Uh, so we have a couple of resources. I will start by sending the first of the chat. Um, so this is the I Act Handbook, um, which came about after a project um, on, um, on preventing sexual violence uh, that IFM kind of coordinated. Sorry, it's not. Yeah, I just sent the link. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so there's, there's activities for leaders, activities for children and activities for young people, um, which could be really interesting uh, for you. We also have a, um, a kind of five principles for consent from everyday feminism, um, which is quite interesting. And then another, sorry, there's a lot of noise outside. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but there's another um, website called safesecurekids.org. Um, there's lots of kind of videos and other activities that you can do um, with children uh, to think about um, consent and, and, and how to, to kind of give it and, and, and things like this. Um, and we also have put the safeguarding at woodcraft.org.uk website there, um, not website, sorry, email address there for you uh, in case you had any questions or anything that you didn't want to necessarily raise here, but you wanted to kind of follow it up after this. Um, I know that the safeguarding team um, in the office would be very happy to hear from you and also uh, I would be happy to hear from you um, as a lead trustee for safeguarding. Um, and we also, in the next slide, we kind of mentioned uh, that um, things about raising concerns, so how as volunteers with Woodcar Folk, you can always or should always, sorry, share concerns about children or young people or about um, adults you work with and the their kind of suitability to volunteer. Um, and, and you can do that by, by emailing uh, the email address that I kind of previously mentioned. And you should do that as kind of these slides say, whether when you have worries about individual children and um, kind of possible cases of abuse or neglect within their home. Um, and this can be yeah, like based on observations or, or things that children tell you and um, any inappropriate behavior of a fellow adult volunteer or child, um, which, you know, sometimes, you know, you might just get a feeling um, and, you know, learning to kind of trust your gut and, 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 and raise the concern um, here is, is really important. Um, and then also, you know, volunteers not abiding by with car folk uh, policies and procedures um, and any kind of other actions that otherwise make young people or adults feel uncomfortable. Um, something that we had an interesting conversation about at our last general council meeting um, around kind of safeguarding and common ground was that um, we're going to have a lot of people from a lot of different places. Um, we're also going to be kind of this is the first for a lot of people the first time um, kind of that they come together in such large groups after COVID. We're going to be having children who have been spent the last kind of couple of years inside. Um, and so, you know, have not necessarily developed in the same way that children previously might have. Um, and these are all things to keep in mind, I think, when, we, when, we're, when we're talking about, uh, when we're at Common Ground and when we're talking about Common Ground and kind of preparing for it within our groups. Um, and then there's also, yeah, the, the next slide, there's some kind of some sources of support, uh, the safeguarding portal on the Graphics website, the NSPCC helpline um, and other, other kind of sources. I don't know whether or not uh, it's possible because I know that this is going to be shared. I don't know whether or not it's possible to include the links and things in the description box below. Uh, that might be quite helpful. Um, but I think that's it. So if anyone has any questions, so that's what the next slide says. Uh, we would be kind of glad to answer them or to, to kind of engage.
Could I just jump in and say that there's something I've been brought up a couple of times is that probably the one of the big things with safeguarding isn't necessarily like the things that happen on camp, but actually, especially on a camp like this, if like we're messed up and then there's other wellbeing services and stuff, or just people talking to their district leaders, um, there's actually Woodcroft would probably be one of the only places for a lot of young people that they would get to talk to an adult about things out, like that were happening at home or at school or something like that, and without fearing like that something bad was going to happen if they said something about it. So actually lots of the safeguarding stuff that will be happening won't necessarily be the, the things that are happening on camp. And it's, but it's still, I think Woodcroft's quite unique because a lot of organisations would maybe think, well, it's not happening like on our premises or it's not happening while they're in our care. So it's not, it's not a responsibility, but I think there's a big, um, big um, push to take concern with people who, who might be telling you things because they don't have anyone else to tell them, even if it's not happening whilst um, during a Woodcraft event. Okay, um, if we don't have any questions, um, as Nadia mentioned, um, please feel free to email the safeguarding uh, email address so that we can follow up on anything you might not want to talk about on this call. Um, I'm just trying to turn my camera back on. There we are. Um, thank you so much uh, to Nadia and Lucy for joining me this evening uh, to present this. I really appreciate it. And I think just in light of common ground coming up, it's a really vital part of the work we're trying to do here um, at Head Office. So thank you so much for supporting us with that. Um, and yes, I will let everyone get on with their evening. Uh, it was quite a nice sort of bite-sized safeguarding workshop this evening, um, but it's always good just to have these reminders uh, sort of fresh in our minds. Um, so yes, thank you so much everyone for joining us and um, hopefully we'll have more for you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.